as you might have guessed, Maria has a mostly sunny yard, I have a mostly shade yard. So we have made two different episodes for you. And today we are gonna share with you our top 10 shrubs for shady yards. I uh, guess you could say this is my time to shine or uh, my time to shade. <laughs> no, no. Maria, you are still the expert, so I'm gonna follow your lead here. Let's do it. Okay, let's grow together. Come on. So you are starting us off with something flashy. What have we got here? These are endless summer hydrangeas, which are the original reblooming hydrangea. <laughs> endless summer sounds like a retirement <laughs> home to me. It's not. <laughs> as long as they get a good amount of morning sun only, you'll get several blooms out of them throughout the season. And if you want to know why some are pink and why some are blue, then you can watch our other episode uh, about blooming trees and shrubs. Hint, it's the acidity. Wow, Maria. <laughs> Just give, give, it all, give it all away. These are certainly luscious. Uh, what do we got here, Maria? These are yews, Ryan. Mews? <laughs> I like <laughs> them already. <laughs> These are yews. They're shade-loving shrubs that come in a variety of shapes and sizes. What, are, what are, are these? These are densiformis, okay. and these will make a nice hedgerow, if you like, in a shady spot. I do like uh, We've got some that are tall and narrow. Um, what, is like the one, columnar. what is the one that stays close to the ground? That's going to be the spreading plum yew. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. So I know these are kubas, right? That is correct, Ryan. Uh, these are great shade-loving shrubs, and what I love about these variegated ones especially is they really brighten up a dark area of the yard. A nice pop of color in that deep, dark shade. Absolutely. Nice. So these are some of my favorite shrubs, but as you can see, they're not blooming right now. But when they do, they are glorious. These are azaleas, Ryan, azaleas. and yes, they are. And what separates these encore azaleas from a classic azalea is that they will rebloom several times throughout the summer. You just don't get that one flourish in the spring, it's gonna keep going. Exactly. Love it. So these I know well. These are the Japanese Aurelia, a fantastic uh, shade-loving shrub. I feel like I'm looking at two different types here, is that right? That's right, Ryan, you are. We've got our classic green, and then this one is called the Spiderweb Japanese Aurelia, which is a variegated variety. And I love these because they add a little touch of tropical flair to a shady area. Certainly, very tropical. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a plant I've never had in my yard, but correct me if I'm wrong, it's hard to tell with them not in bloom right now, but these are the ones that have those big white pom-poms all over them. Absolutely, Ryan. This is the iconic Snowball Viburnum. It's a springtime bloomer, but let me tell you, it is so worth it because when it is in full bloom, it is just covered with those big fluffy white blooms. It is quite a show. Absolutely spectacular. Yeah. So these are Mahonias, um, and I have a version of this in my yard that's extremely prickly, like it'll stick you, it, it actually hurts. Yes. But these you can touch, these are nice. Yeah, these are the Indigo Flare Mahonias. And what I love about these is they bring like a beautiful feathery textural element to a shady area. And you can touch them. And you can touch them. <laughs> So I remember from working retail that these are camellias mm -hmm. and they do something very special. <laughs> but I can't remember what that special thing is. <laughs> so. Something so special. <laughs> what is special about the camellia is when everything else is going dormant for the winter, it is their time to shine. They bloom in the winter. They do indeed. One of the rare. And another bonus plants. is that they come in shrub form or you can get them in tree form. The trees will bloom too. Absolutely. Nice. So these are called giant blue liriopes. Does it look like they're enormous and I'm a tiny person? <laughs> No. Welcome back, Ryan. Uh, <laughs> I'm yes. full size. <laughs> yes, these are the Super Blue Liriope, and these guys will get about two to three foot tall and wide. But if you're not wanting something that big, like maybe you need a smaller border, we've got our classic green Liriope or variegated that stay more about a foot, foot and a half in size. No, I think I like these. So I have purposely saved these for last because they're my absolute favorite shade plant. It is the fern. If I could, I would have just a whole yard, like a fern forest in my house. <laughs> That's right, these are incredible shade plants because they come in all different shapes, sizes, and colors. And some of them are even evergreen in a milder winter. And tell me, what is this crazy one here? This one is my favorite. This is the foxtail fern. And this one's got these really cool tentacles and it looks like it's just gonna crawl up out of that pot. I do wonder if a fox's tail really feels like this. <laughs> I mean, I've never felt a fox's tail. <laughs> yeah. You find one and let me know. <laughs> We have a hosta situation. <laughs> why, why are we over here, Maria? <laughs> These are two of my favorite shade-loving perennials. Technically, they are not shrubs, but they are a wonderful addition to any shady landscape. And that's the only reason they're not on our top 10. It's not because they aren't great. They're just perennials and not shrubs. But I have some in my yard, both of coral bells and hostas, that they think they're shrubs. <laughs> because Absolutely. they are huge, huge and beautiful. Yes. 
So I'm bringing a bonus this time to the episode. It is the cast iron plant. They say the grass is always greener on the other side, <laughs> but sometimes that is literally true because that is where the sun is. I have whole areas of my yard that are in such darkness that nothing will grow or almost nothing will grow. That's when I use this cast iron plant because it can survive in pretty deep shade. So if you're like me and you have an area of deep shade that nothing else will grow, try this cast iron plant. It's better than dirt. <laughs> That's going to be a slogan. <laughs> cast iron plant, better than dirt. <laughs> So that about wraps things up. Um, if you've made it this far and you don't have any shade in your yard, maybe you're a new homeowner with tiny trees, just remember, we're all going to have a shade yard eventually. <laughs> yes, Ryan, trees do grow. Uh, but if you are like me and you have a full sun yard, check out our other episode on the top 10 sun-loving shrubs for North Texas. Definitely. Whether you have sun or shade, Covington's has got you covered. Come up here and see us today. Let's grow together. So mom, I, I am, this, this is beautiful, don't get me wrong. Okay. Um, I am used okay. um, I am used to your yard being perfect. So you know what I'm gonna ask. What, what is happening You don't here? like this right here? <laughs> What's happening is what I wanna know. Well, we have lost the grass and your dad and I are arguing whether to redo everything and then start putting gr ground cover well, why, or- Why have you lost the grass? Well, it had to do with the cold and the shade. We've got so much shade and we've got so many big trees that just take all the nutrients. I wanna try one more time with zoysia. So I'm you gonna, are going to try grass again. I'm going to try grass. It's, it's, it stays in darkness. Well, the end of the day, it's going to come through here. Give it a little sun for a while. Give it a little sun for a while. So why zoysia? Uh, because it takes a lot of shade. Okay. But, but, I don't know more what so it takes. St. Augustine? Oh, yes, yes. Really? Yes, yes, it takes more shade than that. So people have had good success. I'm going to try it one more time before we have to redo and think again. I tell you what, we're going to check back on Mom in a couple <laughs> episodes. Okay. okay. It'll be All an right. experiment. That's what we'll do.